Hi guys. In this episode, we'll be talking about rendering. I'm here with Rafael Souza, and uh, we'll be discussing a bit of our rendering pipeline, how this all came together with the help of our uh, supporters. So stay tuned. In the early beginning of our short film, um, we didn't exactly know how we would be rendering all this. Yeah, for sure. So we had to test uh, whichever solution we had in, on the market. Um, and first of all, we, we started by using the, the most common CPU renders. Yeah. Of course, always talking about biased renders. Biased renders, Obviously, yeah. you can fit whatever you want, and that's mostly the, the benefit of it all, the speed and the control. Um, eventually, we... You found out Redshift? We thought about GPU render, um, and Mo yes, about Redshift, still on a very early alpha stage. Yeah. And uh, right off the bat, when once we started using Redshift, we immediately saw the benefit of using GPU rendering. And that was really like, well, this can change everything. Everything. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps we no longer will have to think about rendering 100 passes in each shot, and probably just let's try to get it out as final stage in a and single final image. Pass. Yeah, just that's crazy. crazy. And it's done. So we just thought, okay, GPU rendering, new hardware. How's it gonna? How are we gonna pull off? Yeah. All this magic, and uh, here comes Nvidia. Yeah. Obviously, with all those power horses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not only on Nvidia, which um, us with like five or six PCs with powerful GPUs, we can do a lot. But, but for, at some point, yeah, we for the, the length of the, the movie won't be enough. We are talking about 150, 160 shots. shots. Yeah. So in order to render all this. Eventually, there's some render farms that come and show up and has been using Redshift. And uh, that's when the uh, grid markers came along. We, we talked to them and they also um, got thrilled with our short film and decided to help us. Along with a great t team as well of Orion VM. Like, it's a perfect match. They do the bridge between the hardware guys and uh, sending, sending files. Everyone tries to, to make it like an um, automatic process. Yeah. It's like sculpting and stone by stone, eventually we'll build a, build a castle and we'll be like a full automatic tool. Yeah, we hope so. Sure. Um, and it's, it's, it's fun. It's and fun. most of all, it's really powerful to get things done fast. We knew from, from the beginning that we wanted to have like a beautiful picture in each frame. And with Redshift, we decided to try if we could get like the best picture as possible of, uh, directly in the camera. Yeah. So Redshift allows us to use uh, depth real field. depth of field and great looking depth of field, great looking motion blur for all kinds of objects, yeah. moving objects, moving everything. Up. And um, also as for the, for the environment, so you get the the fog, the volumetric effects, right off each each or the, the lights that you want to select. So yeah, allowing us to do this right out of the render, we can all all almost see which is going to be the the final look of the movie. You can art direct it right at the render time. You don't need to yeah, go to me, a post. For me, th that was crucial because. It's yeah. much more creative. Uh, you can really in quickly define what you want yeah. in every single shot. So you can even import your even favorite faster. LUTs and try to mix them together to see the, the better uh, look of your movie that you would like to try. Okay, let me try this style and this style and move the lights accordingly. It all turns into perfection once you get to the, to the part where it's biased. And yeah. So you can uh, you can be very selective how it what's affecting what. Yeah, yeah. And most of all, how fast you clean up your image, especially since we tried. Okay, let's try and put motion blur and DOF and all those stuff together, and and usually even Redshift documentation says okay, probably adaptive sampling mm -hmm. isn't going to be as simple as just having a low and a high uh, sample. Yeah, it will take time to clean up the image. Yeah, for sure. Eventually you'll get like to fix fixed sampling, but no, never. Never. Like yeah. in all the shots we are running, we are really low samples, like 16, and never higher than 
okay, 1024, but still it's very high, but super fast to, to clean up. Yeah. And, um, and it's amazing because you could never do this anywhere. And uh, again, it's very important to be able to quickly select what you want to, to affect. Yeah. As a path tracer, it's, uh, the lights effects are, they come out of the box as well. Uh, you don't even need to, to worry too much about effects like surface scattering or bounce lighting. No, 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 you just, you just do it. Yeah, don't you just think press of a button and you say, okay, I want the, like to be shiny and bounce the lighting around. I don't need to worry about calculations and what kind of settings I need to... Yeah, it's pretty appreciate. much that, that uh, press the magic button mm -hmm. that everyone yeah. talks about. Yeah, pretty it's much. It's almost this. It's, it's amazing, man. It's like... Out this of is do it. <laughs> We have like uh, five sets yeah, uh, like the, the and have more than 300 objects. So shading and texturing each single object would be not only very time consuming, but um, also for Redshift you have to think about texturing. Yeah. And you can't simply make uh, 10 million textures and hope to, to get it uh, cached in VRAM. So it's yeah. very important that you keep uh, light textures and uh, if possible, no textures at all. Um, and uh, eventually we came up with uh, this kind of materials like um, plastic materials, metal materials, mm -hmm. stone materials. But the thing was each of these materials was, had so many um, nodes that would read like display, display colors, stuff like that, that allowed us to... Yeah, that's, that's another thing, uh, like Redshift itself it gives you the tools to make the bridge with the software that you're using. And uh, the software we're using as our main tool is Cinema. Like Matteo was saying, we make like um, display colors for each object, so we could add variation and connect it to a lot of textures. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, and it was... So basically, just one material you apply to, to 500 different objects, different objects and, and they all look each different. one will do, look different. Yeah, for sure. Because you can map that variation to roughness, to everything. The textures, it's so powerful, and then in the end it's so light. Yeah. It's yeah. super fast to render. You can have like five textures just and don't in worry a about super powerful shader. Yeah. You can like, okay, I know that thing is clay, I'm just gonna put the magic procedural mega clay, clay material. material and it just applies to a hundred of objects that with the same because we even using. even we didn't have to think about UV. Yeah, yeah 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 because it has also support for triplanar. Just the hero objects. Even even some you can you yeah. could use triplanar. Uh, but most of all was just, just like flat mapping, cubic mapping and yeah, stuff. For sure, for sure. Just just a quick a quick note. Yesterday shot I remember it had 930 textures, textures loaded, yeah. and it, it was lo only taking 60 megabytes of VRAM. 900 yeah. textures. And we are using the the cards from NVIDIA, they are like how many gigs? 24. <laughs> 24, okay. <laughs> 24, so yeah, you, yeah, I could probably get, a, get it with a GeForce yeah, 600, yeah, <laughs> like from yeah, like, 10 oh. years ago, and still render it. Yeah. Surely. They, they, I believe the team really mastered the technology of, of NVIDIA CUDA and it's... Yeah, because it's it, the, the first frame, it takes a bit longer because like 900 textures, it takes some time, it took like to eight load minutes it. to, yeah, to load. Yeah, for sure. And the render itself took like one minute and a half. And we're talking yeah. about 2K resolution. With the, at least that shot, we had 150 objects and environment, uh, fogs, yeah, dove, yeah. Motion blur. Yeah, but balance it out. Like, I have an hour frames, for waiting for a frame or 10 minutes nice. waiting for a frame and a movie. <laughs> it's magic. Yeah. And um, another thing, important thing, of course, uh, since it was an offer stage and even now, which is already a final release, and uh, it's always upgrading. Yeah, they're always improving. They're, they're always improving, uh, but, but still there are some issues. And yeah. um, one of the issues we had, because even though we no longer have like 100 passes, like we were saying, still, um, if you We'd want like to, to extra some control. control. Yeah. So eventually, at least we wanted to have like the, an, an extra Z-depth pass, an a AO pass, and uh, like a, a puzzle mat, an yeah. ID pass, you call, you call it what you want. And um, eventually we got 
into this simple, it looks simple issue of the opacity maps. Uh, yeah, it was a bit troublesome just to get the heck of it, but uh, it it really helped it because it's like because we thought either we like we're going to have to implement a connection to the AOV to each single material, so and we, by we're that, gonna we're yeah. gonna die. Yeah, because <laughs> by like by that time we're already like what. 50% or more yeah, in shading yeah, yeah, yeah. done. It, it would be That's it would hundreds be of crazy. materials. It would be crazy, and if you wanted to change anything, you would have to do it all 500 materials. So, so that's when the, the take system in C4D helped us out. Yeah. Was uh, was crucial because it was done before, but using physical, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where they use the take system to make like a multi-pass layer where you choose pretty much what you need to export. Mm -hmm. uh, in Redshift it was a bit different since we needed to uh, to create some custom AOVs that helps us out. Um, by default they don't have like an ID pass. Well they do have but it's a bit tricky to use, right? It's like a... Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make much sense as, as, as it is. Yeah, uh, but uh, they'll, I'm sure they'll improve it or come for, to another solution. Yeah, we just sure. made it based on the display color. Yeah, since yeah. We had the, the yeah, that was display the color in, in each object. Yeah, because uh, since we needed that, that display color to make variation of the objects, we thought, well, why don't you, we use this as an ID? You can control the color that we want in a, a specific object to get a proper mat for when the comp, Whatever. Yeah. When the comp passes. Um, but the main thing here was that by using the tag system, you, you, we could quickly like um, override uh, a single AO material, for instance, yeah. to every tag, every texture tag. So in a single click, you could we render can have a single material, not yeah. 500 AO materials, just one. So quickly yeah. change it again with the opacity maps. Yeah. That was just the, the, the main difference because if we had materials with opacity maps, say leaves, uh, whatever, yeah. those are the single ones that you have to manually add the opacity map to, either to, to a, the a, a, a sprite material or something like that. Otherwise it won't read it and it only read it to whatever object is mapped to. But it's super fast to, to deal with and if you, have, if you want to change the AO settings or anything, it's yeah, again just super to quick to change. Just change one material, not all the materials. Yeah, so, and yeah. an ecosystem where it's built, you can pretty much make a preset and just apply it to every shot, right? Kinda. Okay. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough, but it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it does. So this is it, guys. In the next episode, we'll be hearing all the wonders of sound with yeah. the wonderful sound design made from Ergonoise, yeah. our partners, and the um, original score made by Steve Rucker. Nice. Yeah. It's gonna okay. be awesome. Stay tuned. Thanks, Rukhvi. <laughs> Power slap. <laughs>